is, uh, so we started up at Mile End Road Bridge, and this is the first little area um, that I thought was relevant. Um, it's just uh, by Sol Bay Road footbridge. Um, and there was a, a reed bed in here that was full of rubbish. Uh, all the rubbish would collect in there. So I think it was about three years ago, we got in there and we gave it a really deep clean. I think we took out 20 bags of rubbish. And then we put these old oak beams across the front of the reed bed so that all the rubbish that's floating up and down just bounces off and carries on. And since then, the reed beds have flourished, uh, lots of nests in there. Um, to the left of the picture by Sol Bay Road Bridge, there were a lot of uh, sycamore and ash saplings and buddleia, and we, we cut all that down, let a bit more light in, and uh, the reed beds are thriving. And um, the day we came to take the photo, a young heron looking for his lunch, which was uh, which was nice. Um, but there's at least four nests in there now, and um, the reeds are thriving, which is great. They, um, the technical term for them is phragmites, and they uh, have this amazing capability. They filter out lots of the bad things in the water, so they're always a good thing to have in the waterway. Um, next photo, please. Uh, this is, is there one or two of this one, Michelle? I can't remember. Right, okay, go back. Um, this is a floating planter that is the other side of Sol Bay Road Bridge. Um, this bank was just a mass of buddleia, um, you know, which give some shelter to wildlife and um, birds and the fish like it but we thought we'd clear out a little area and put this floating planter in um, we put this together in May last year and it has just gone mad it's gone crazy um, the plants love it largely because they get sunshine all day um, and there's all sorts in there don't expect me to remember the names of everything. Uh, is that a purple loose strife in the middle? And a meadowsweet on the left. Um, but it's got um, marsh marigold, small yellow plants at the front, which flower early in the spring. And, it, and it's thriving. Um, we actually went down there today and cut back some overhanging brambles and buddleia and um, clean, give it a, gave it a bit of a clean. But... Um, that's a biomatrix planter that um, was funded by um, the Mayor's Greener City Fund. Um, and we're doing more of that sort of thing this, this year at some point. Touch wood. Um, next photo, please, Michelle. So this is a really um, great little spot. Um, just down from the planter, behind all this vegetation, is a primary school and i've forgotten the name of it but um the beauty of this stretch is there is a two to three meter bank and then the fence for the school and you cannot get access to it so it's completely overgrown um and it's a wildlife haven there's a kingfisher nest in there um we see them occasionally and it's just a lovely little spot that that we've done nothing to other than take rubbish away from. And it's lovely, dense, uh, natural little spot and lots of wildlife uh, living in and around it. So um, yeah, that's, uh, we haven't done a lot to that, but it's, it's a lovely spot. That wouldn't be Ben Johnson's school, would it, Dave? Of course it would, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, Ben Johnson's school and, you know, the wildlife, it's, they, they seem to be used to the the sound of the kids playing, and yeah, they there's lots and lots of things living there. Um, so it's it's a very nice little spot. Um, next photo, please. This is uh, down just north of Ben Johnson Lock, um, which is where we 
when we started we were just picking up litter and then um uh, some people approached us and said oh you know you can get a grant here and there and so we got a grant and um this is where we did our first lot of planting um this is just above the lock to the left you can see a bunch of phragmites uh, when we first planted these we naively didn't put any fencing up and the the phragmites all grew and then the geese came along and um, ate it all um, so we've now fenced it and the phragmites is starting to get established along with a whole bunch of other stuff um, that we didn't plant it's just found its way there um, but it's now getting uh, turning into quite a dense um, bank of uh, aquatic plants um, the geese seem to like hanging around there and sitting on the beams um, so yeah hopefully those phragmites are going to gradually creep along and we'll have another lovely reed bed there um, uh, they were planted I think they were planted initially five years ago, but then replanted four years ago. Um, so they're, they're coming along. And the next photo is right next door to it. Um, this is just to the left is where Ben, ben Johnson Lock is. This was a very shallow um, part of the canal. So all we did was uh, we bought pre-planted coir rolls um, and put stakes in and put the coir roll straight into the canal and um, it, it's really sorry got a cat on my desk um, it's really coming along uh, there's bulrushes and phragmites in there which we didn't plant they found their way in there it's largely um, yellow flag iris uh, hard sedges rushes um, but it's it's really getting established now and all of the different plants are starting to spread um, and yeah it's it's working well that that is that that little section um, and next photo please Michelle what is the next photo right um, either side of Ben Johnson lock um, historically there was just um a mass of bramble and nettle um and molly and i decided to create two wildflower meadows uh so um we had a lot of help from the tower hamlet cemetery park team here because we didn't know what we were doing um the the top the soil there was very rich so we dug it out um with help from community groups um a couple of corporate groups helped us as well we took about a foot and a half of topsoil out um and then laid a, a membrane i don't i don't remember the technical term for it and then um covered that in recycled crushed concrete um and then filled it full of plants uh it's taken a few years to get going when we first did it, we put seeds in and um, I think the pigeons had a field day. Um, but gradually it's getting established. Is there another meadow shop, Michelle? I think there might be a few actually. Okay, this is the towpath side. Um, yeah, the towpath side's doing pretty well. Um, there's some hollyhocks in there, which we'll happily take credit for, but they weren't us. Um, the black door houses a sweatshop and one of the ladies in there planted a hollyhock last year and this year we've got about six um which is a nice addition um what's the next photo michelle yeah this is more on the towpath side uh don't ask me what all those plants are um, some lovely kidney vetch which is the yellow plant yeah, on the left yeah. dave that one, yeah, and then then you've got the field scabious on the right, the nice yeah. purple one, and then those blue ones, the viper's bugloss in the back. Yeah, and then obviously you see those tall hollyhocks by the black door. So yeah, it yeah. looks looked lovely when we were there in the rain the other week. Yeah, and it's um, I mean this this year it's 
last October was the first time we streamed it. Um, so we gave it its first proper cutback and it's come back really well. We've added a few more mature plugs to a few of the bare patches. Um, but the, the towpath side is, um, yeah, it's doing very well. Um, takes quite a lot of watering when it's dry, but um, there you go. Um, are there photos now of the other side? Nope. That's just slightly further down under the trees by the lock. Um, we've put in a, a bunch of bulbs and different shady, shade tolerant plants. Um, and th there's a really good mixture there. And there tends to be, tends to be color there most of the year round, which is nice. Uh, next one, please, Michelle. Ah, that's just, just below the lock on the, the sloping, um, the sloping bank running up to the lock. Uh, we've put a few things in there and is that chicory can or? That's your Viper's Bugloss again, but right, this, okay. this one's a bit, a bit short. So it must've got cut at some point and it's yeah. kind of grown a bit shorter, but yeah, it looked, looked, it looked fabulous when we were there together. It's really yeah, quite no, that, impressive um, show. That little patch is, is finally, um, finding its feet and um, looking good. And I think the next photo is the other side. Yes, this is the uh, non towpath side of the lock. Um, again, we dug it out, filled it with uh, recycled crushed concrete, and we didn't put a fence up. And um, I think a lot of the local dog walkers and kids thought it was a play area. Uh, so it, it is a couple of years behind the other side we didn't want to put a fence up but in the end we felt we had to um we, we put quite a, an open fence up so that it didn't obscure the view the trees we put in have um have flourished uh we actually put in three on the other side but the flat owner came out and cut them down because he didn't want bugs in his flat um the ones on the non towpath side are doing really well. And uh, this year, that meadow is finally starting to get established. Um, it's quite a long process uh, working out what, what likes to be there and what doesn't. But yeah, that side's coming along now. Is there another shot of that side? Yep, that's trees again and a coot. Um, is there one more, Michelle, or is that it? Yeah, um, one more. As you can see, there's still a bit of a trench in the middle that's uh, not doing very well. That that side is very hard um, to keep watered. For some reason, any water that is falls on that side, it just runs out so quickly. Um, so the poppies and the fritillary that grow there, they grow very small. Um, and that is because they're uh, under pressure from lack of water, apparently. But yeah, we, we keep watering it and it's gradually, gradually coming along. Um, and all of the stuff you can see in the canal is, uh, there, there's been a lot of blue green algae in the canal this year. And we put a bale of hum barley straw in there and it's killed it. And that's what you can see with weed hanging off the side um next photo please this is uh directly below ben johnson lock opposite the ragged school museum um either side of this we have planted um this is the area that is our 2020 greener city fund area um we we got some money from the mayor again. So this entire area will be filled up with biomatrix planters, uh, nesting platforms, uh, similar to the planter up at Mile End, but a lot bigger. Um, we're gonna have some trees in there. Um, yeah, we're, uh, we were gonna plant that in May, but obviously, um, something happened and we couldn't so uh, we're, we're hoping to do that in late august 
get it all in before the before the autumn comes so that that whole area is going to be transformed in the next few months uh, to the right you can see um it, it's the old loading bay uh, quayside for the old gas works and we put some planters in there uh, the water's very deep there it's about 12 feet deep uh, when we first got a, got a grant we didn't know what we were doing um we went for a company whose um floating structures are not that good um there were five large floating planters in there until march this year uh the plants were thriving but the planters were sinking and if they had sunk the plants would have all died because it's as i say 10 to 12 feet deep there so you'll see those planters later on we've um moved them to a better home um so you'll see the the planters from there a little later on um as you can see from that photo in the canal lots of rubbish on the bottom and that's what that's with a covering of weed in the winter it's uh even worse but you know we're trying to get it out slowly um next photo please michelle um this doesn't look its best because of all the duckweed but this is we we call this silverfish bay because of the silver fish um when we got our first grant from the green city fund we planted the planters around the edge uh and they they done okay but they're the quality of the planters is not great so ultimately i think we'll have to replace them um right in the middle in the corner you can see a, a large bed of um yellow flag iris when we when we did this there were three yellow flag iris plants just randomly along the edge so we moved them into the corner and it's gone from three plants to all the plants you can see now in four or five years and again it's just keeping them clean keeping the rubbish away um, to the right of the iris there are some new plants we've put in recently and another bale of uh, barley straw um, and in the middle that's a biomatrix planter uh, um, that was that, that w we had a um a, a large meeting of interested parties at the ragged and biomatrix donated this island it's it's a, it's a bit of an experiment cause it's got a solar panel on it which runs um a, a little motor that aerates the water underneath it, it's not big enough to make a huge difference it was an experiment to be honest and it's also got an apple tree on it um which you can't really see from that photo um so that little island was um a, a demonstration stroke experiment and uh, the plants on it are thriving um the moor hens and the geese have enjoyed nesting on it um to the left of the um coot's nest you'll see a little uh oblong structure those are old British waterways floating planters that you see on the canal that have got no plants in them. We pull them out, take them apart, and turn them into nesting platforms um, full of mulch. So, hopefully, next spring, rather than make their nest on a precarious bit of oak, the coots and the ducks will use those platforms to nest. Uh, fingers crossed. Um, yes next photo please michelle oh that's the other other bit of silverfish bay um that the planter by the silver fish is a biomatrix planter that we that we had a spare one we put it in there and you can see the difference um to the to the far left there's an aga planter that's i mean it's, it's going to be removed basically um the the biomatrix planters are much um they're basically rolls of coir um in a planter like that there would be six rolls of coir 
that are fixed to the floating structure and then you put the plants in between the rolls um, so that they have a much stronger medium to grow into the the old fashioned british waterways planters and the aga planters it's just a floating structure with a coir pallet and after a couple of years the coir pallet disintegrates and the plant has got has got nothing to grow in the biometric ones biometric ones much much better design so uh that's what we'll be using in the future um next photograph please excuse me um that's the other side of silverfish bay um again aga planters the, the plants are doing really well but um the planters will eventually fail so yeah possibly next year or the year after we'll remove them take the plants out and put biomatrix planters in uh, the plant on the far right is an enormous water dock that has got so heavy it's fallen over so um, we're gonna have to remove that get rid of the planter and find a new home for that water dock um, it's a bit like a triffid it goes from nothing to five feet in about five weeks um, but yeah there's uh, there's work in progress going on there um, excuse me next photo please what have we got next ah this is our um, sadly it's got some graffiti on it because we've not been able to remove that at the moment this is uh, a little corner as you come down from victory bridge ben johnson road uh we call it rudy's corner because when uh when we had to remove the topsoil uh, a gentleman called rudy was there digging away and uh uh, he dug down about three or four feet. He went a bit too far. It was quite funny. But um, again, we filled that up with um, um, recycled crushed concrete. And, you know, it's a, it's a thriving little meadow now. Um, that graffiti will be removed when we can get back out on the towpath. Um, yeah, and, uh, and there are lots of little corners like that up and down the canal. And we try and do do what we can with each little space um next photo please michelle um this looks a bit this is our reed cycling project um at mile end um climbing wall there is a massive reed bed which is encroaching on to the navigation of the regent's canal um canal and rivers trust we're going to cut it down but I, 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 we approached them and said, look, let's see if we can pull some of these out and see if we can move them. So we pulled out about 100 plants, put them in um, coir sacks with Tower Hamlet Cemetery Park organic compost um, and just put them on the bed of the canal the other side of Ben Johnson Road Bridge. Not been hugely successful. Um, but some of them are growing, which is good news. The The white boom is just to try and keep geese and rubbish away from them while they get established. Um, we're going to have to um, approach this in a different manner this autumn um, and find a, a more um, effective way of pulling up reed plants and moving them. But there's a little reed bed starting there, which is something um yeah um again shame about the duckweed uh next photo please michelle um this is um this this whole area is um uh, excuse me by the um c2c rail bridge um in between ben johnson and salmon's lane and it's it's a bit of a problem spot um on the non towpath side, it's consistent fly tipping. Um, and on the towpath side, uh, network rail won't let us remove the graffiti. It's quite a dark little spot. And there's, there's, always, there's always problems. But um, the, the yellow flag you can see there is an example of, you know, we just kept the rubbish off those yellow flag and they've thrived. 
Um, What's the yellow flag? Sorry, Dave. Uh, Is yeah, it a plant? Yellow flag iris. All oh, right, I was expecting the yellow flag with the flag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's the it's the yellow iris you see in a lot of waterways. Um, come out in the spring, they're lovely. Um, and if, uh, well, you can see there's a gap there that's full of rubbish, which is why nothing's growing there. Um, Tower Hamlets are developing that little, um, that little triangle. And hopefully them turning it into a little park and putting a large curb there to stop fly tipping will help us improve that area. Um, and there's a, a, a development opposite Tower Hamlets Homes, and there's a, um, a a play center going in there. So, one or two things happening that might help to make that a, a slightly more welcoming spot. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. Um, next photo, please, Michelle. Um, well, the the Harris fencing that is where the play center is going to be. This is right next to. Uh, the rail bridge on the towpath side and there's a stretch here we call it our woodland meadow but it's not been massively successful um, it's very very shady um, too shady um, for a few years we've been planting there um, some of the bulbs come up and I think that plant on the left is a stinking iris uh, Ken can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the stinking iris and the bulbs have done okay. Uh, basically, the problem here is that there's too much um, shade and the soil is just like dust. Uh, so we're trying to, via um, 106 money from the development, build, um, put in you know, some railway sleepers or something so that we can raise the level of the soil put in some better soil and then replant it again. Um, yeah, it'd, it'd be nice to have a, um, a different sort of meadow along there where it is slightly shady. But um, today our efforts have, uh, have not been hugely successful. So um, when, when the development's finished and some of the canopies cut back, we're hoping we'll get some money to, um, put some decent Tower Hamlet Cemetery Park compost in there and uh, replant it. Um, so yeah, that's our little woodland stretch. Uh, I think there might be another photo of the woodland stretch, Michelle. Nope. Mm -hmm. This is a happy heron. Um, during, the, during the seven or eight years that we've been doing things, it, albeit anecdotal, we, we have noticed a massive increase in wildlife, whether it's coots, moorhens, ducks, geese, um, all sorts of, um, you know, the, there were barely any sparrows around when we started. And, you know, there, there's a trend, they're coming back. We've got um, goldfinches, wrens, and right near where I, this heron was photographed, um, there was um, fire crests last year, so I don't know if they were just passing through or they're going to move in. Um, but they, I, I was just um, doing some odd jobs on the canal, and this heron picked up an eel, jumped on the towpath, and um, had his breakfast on the towpath, which was uh, quite funny to watch. Um, frightened a number of the uh, people walking up and down the towpath, but there you go. Um, but yeah, good sign. Um, you know, there are quite a few herons we're seeing this year, so it's good. It's good. Uh, what's next, Michelle? This is another little corner. Um, you've got a, a, a ramp down onto the towpath and steps uh, just north of Salmon's Lane Lock. Uh, we sort of called this Honeysuckle Corner. Um, can't remember why, other than we planted loads of honeysuckle in there. Um, the honeysuckle had um, was badly affected by um, some sort of fly aphid this spring. Um, 
Molly's been treating it and got rid of all of that, and the the the, the honeysuckles are starting to grow now. They're um, native British British honeysuckles, and they seem to like it there. Um, so apart from um, watering the honeysuckle and keeping the nettles back, we're just letting this. Um, oh, we planted the lavender as well, I think. Um, it's a little corner. We're just keeping an eye on watering it when it needs it picking up the rubbish and you know hopefully those honeysuckle will get established and create a nice a nice backdrop to the uh, to the other plants so that's our uh, honeysuckle corner is there another photo of that no uh this is the uh the lock at salmon's lane um i don't know what the technical term for the second lock is but this is on in the second lot that never gets used. And, th and these lilies are amazing. Um, those locks are 12 to 15 feet deep. Um, three years ago, that lily, those lilies uh, got trampled by workmen. That was drained. The workmen came in to put, um, put a new overflow in. They were without water for six weeks. The workmen walked all over them. And then the next spring, boom, back they come. Um, they're, they're, they're lovely plants. Um, we're trying to get some more to grow up by Ben Johnson. Um, the ones we've planted so far have not got established. Uh, but these at Salmon's Lane are lovely. The flowers are gorgeous. Um, so that's Salmon's Lane lock. Um, next photo, please, Michelle. Um, shame about all this duckweed. Uh, this is just below the lock. Um, it does need a bit of um, editing, this stretch. But to the far left, when we first started doing things around here, there were six metres of yellow flag iris at the far left-hand side. And again, this is an example where we've just tried to keep out the buddleia and the brambles and the litter, and it's really, really spread. Um, I think there's probably 30 or 40 meters of yellow flag. There's some Phragmites coming in there um, and some other plants. I'm not quite sure what they are. Um, there's a Buddleia that needs taken out of there. Um, but it's just another example that, you know, you keep it clean and keep the rubbish off it. It, you know, the water quality is good. The plants will thrive. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's just below um, Sam's Lane Lock. Um, next photo, please, Michelle. I'm not going too fast, am I? Um, this is um, another lovely reed bed. This is by, I've forgotten the name of that estate. Um, yes, it's in between um, Commercial Road and uh, Salmon's Lane. Um, it's a really, really healthy reed bed that has, again, has spread in our time of doing things. In the middle of it, there are a couple of shrubs. I'm not sure what they are, but also in that middle patch, there are some old British waterways floating planters that are restricting the growth in the middle. And um, we will attempt to remove them this autumn at the end of the nesting season and then that should see that reed bed really fill up and um and spread even further um yeah it's a you know it's a lovely habitat for all sorts of things um and as i said it's uh somehow it managed to filter bad things out of the water um not technical enough to explain how it does it i'm afraid <laughs> um so that's uh just just as I say, between Commercial Road and um, um, Summers Lane. So now I think we're into, right. Um, this is at the old, what was a turning bay at uh, Commercial Road. Um, the, um, the, the, the air raid shelter you can see is actually a Kingfisher bank. Um, in conjunction with, well, mainly Tower Hamlet Cemetery Park and um, John Archer at uh, Tower Hamlet's Biodiversity Officer put this Kingfisher Bank in. Uh, 
we weren't expecting it to be quite so big but um that's been in there for a few years now it keeps getting visitors um but no one's moved in yet um about a month ago there were some sand martins there making a hole but they haven't moved in um two years ago there was a kingfisher hanging around still still no one's moved in um the plants you can see in the canal um most of these are the planters that we had in the deep water at ben johnson uh, so we carefully towed them down the canal um these structures have a um a cage underneath them um so underneath the planter is a, a, a meter deep cage uh, and that creates its own little um, little ecosystem. So what we did was we found a spot where it was about a meter deep and we drilled holes in the planters and sunk them. Um, and since we've sunk them, those planters have just gone mad. Um, everything is growing twice as quickly um, and you've got a really lovely dense um, collection of um sedges purple loosestrife water docks yellow flag iris um another water dock and i'm not sure what the plant is directly below the kingfisher nest but um that's a, that's a lovely little um corner it it doesn't have many boats going in there so um long-term plan is to put in a lot of the biomatrix planters to the left of these and create quite a large area for plants and wildlife um, and hopefully someone will move into the kingfisher bank one day mm -hmm.